So it's now half past nine. I've been walking for 20 minutes, or just under 20 minutes. I've just come from the post office there. And uh, I've been, haven't been walking fast because it's too warm to walk fast. You've taken me time doing videoing and things. This is Mrs. Porritt's field, and this was left in her will to the village to say that nobody should ever build on it. And so it's protected land. Now, previously they've had things grazing it, but what they've decided to do now been taken under sort of a new trusteeship it's a new management it's um what they're gonna do is is they're gonna not have cattle and and, and, and horses on it they actually uh, improve the habitat for what more wildlife have more of a wildflower and then maybe just have it grazed after all the flowers and things have seeded in the late summer early autumn so i think that's what they're going to do they're just making it more of a wildlife haven uh, Things like that, I don't know, that's, that's the current thing anyway. Things change over time, doesn't it? But it's nice to have that just big green space in the middle of the village. No one's allowed to build on that. So we're heading now down Cleesby Road. Some nice houses on this street. And we're heading down to the train, st train station. But of course, today's Thursday, so there's actually a train strike on. Now we did see that train earlier. Uh, which is because this line between Leeds to Ilkley and Bradford to Ilkley is actually one of the few services that are running and the services are only happening like once maybe an hour uh, or so and they're finishing at about five o'clock half past five so they are running though normally they're about every 15 minutes coming along uh, so they just must have just selected which train services they were going to keep going and, and there's like a few little lines that they keep going so this one is one of them but just with a more of an intermittent service so we might so we saw one going along to Ilkley uh, that same one might be due to come back soon I suppose it depends on the timetable but uh, yeah so it's not a completely zero uh, service today there is some trains on this line See the nature of these houses that's a semi-detached but it's a, it's a big one i've got uh three floors but it might even have cellars in some of these old stone buildings i think on the hill got that stone one and you've got a, a brick one with lovely stained glass windows and they've got the original stained glass windows as well so they haven't removed those the double glazing they've kept them in which is interesting Yeah. And then there uh, you come down the hill, there's some newer ones as well down the bottom here. Oh. So we're coming down to the station, there's actually somebody with a leaf blower uh, cleaning the platforms. Which, so it's operating and uh, here's another train coming in, look. So it's definitely a operational line. There's actually nobody getting the train because everyone thinks there's, there's no service. I don't know if there's anybody on that. We're going to just climb over the, over the bridge. The little nursery here, that's why the prams and buggies are here. The little nursery taking over some of the old the railway buildings and stuff, ticket offices and stuff. There is still a ticket office in there. Uh, but yeah, so let's have a look. I mean, there's nobody getting on and off that. Is there anybody on it? I don't think there's anybody. Oh, there's one person getting on. Look, where did I get? Oh, there's a couple of people getting on. And there's, but there's, there's one or two people on it. It's mainly empty. If you look at the seats, you probably can't see the reflection, but I can see through the. There's, there's virtually nobody on it. So even though that's an irregular service, maybe one. Yeah, I mean, we saw a train going along earlier, so that's it was only 20 minutes ago. So yeah, interesting. Maybe they've got slightly more frequent ones on this line, but yeah. So we've just come out the other side of the station and we're now in this little uh, housing estate, which is the one immediately adjacent to the homestead estate. Just walking through this. Lots of people's gardens in flower. This one's just grass. 
Some people have got a lot of paved over driveways and things like that. Not much flowers, but some people have made a bit of a, a little bit of an effort to have flowery gardens. That's a bit disappointing there, isn't it? That one, just a pile of gravelly weeds. Nice rose garden there. Very finely cut lawn on that one. No flowers at all. And all sort of tarmacked over. Solar panels. Okay. So we'll get around this bend and then that uh, takes us to the main road and then we just have to turn left or down a little bit. But uh, you can actually see some of the houses. So that one there with the solar panels on it there, that's a relatively new one on the Homestead Estate. Uh, it's actually on the street we're on. It's, it's uh, you've got the bungalow next to us, and then you've got that one. And that's really all there is on our side of the street it's because of the shape of the plots. So our house is just through, through there. See the lime tree top there, through there. So these are basically the estate that. Uh, if we look at Mary's window, for example, you can sort of just see the top of these houses. These are the ones you can see. So we're almost there, and then we're just going to pass now Chevin Avenue, which is the road we live on. But of course, this is Chevin Avenue on this estate, but it's blocked off at the end here. Just here, it's blocked off, so you can't get through to our estate. It's the same Chevin Avenue. So we live on. Uh, down there. Okay. So almost back now, just to the, the main road here, then left, and then down to the Homestead Estate. So we're back onto the A65 here now. So I could have just walked when I came out of that lane. Uh, after walking through the the uh, where the little duck pond was and the, that railway bridge, I could have then just turned right there and followed this road along, come down here. But actually, because it's a there's a, you know it's a, it's a main road, it wouldn't be very pleasant. So it's actually better to do the way we've just done there, walking through the village. So this is now Homestead Estate, all this fencing and uh, Heylandai trees and all that. So this is the, the top house and then the fence changes so this is probably uh, the next property which is Zach's house then. And then there's another property Perhaps where the hedge changes colour, that's uh, separate people who live there who own a nut and bolt in Bradford. And we come to the final property on this end, I think, here, which is uh, number one, which the, uh, currently the, the people in there are the chair of the committee for the Homestead Estate. So we're just going to turn left and we'll go past their driveway basically and then in to there. So then we'll go here. So here's a little letterbox. Gets emptied at nine in the morning apparently. So this one's recently been sold. So I think it's waiting for the new people to move in to there. Well, I think the, the fence did all off, that security fence in, but of course it makes it difficult to keep the, the Leandi uh, cut. 
the big lorry coming in here. Not sure which way it's going. They uh, recently planted all these laurel laurels here and then put a bit of a fence in there. Well, the old Leilanda has been smothered with ivy and killed it. Yeah, so, looks like it's delivering a pallet of something. Bricks or something. Here we are. Back home. Ahem. <clears throat>